Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. On the series strategy game and we are going to take a look at a new game today. Micropose was kind enough to send me a link to this one and it is fantastic. It is Arms Trade Tycoon Tanks. It's a tank tycoon. What's not to like? We do like designing things on this channel um, and tanks are certainly among that. So yeah, uh, let's take a look at that. It is a Kickstarter. So all of this is early access alpha stuff. Um, not entirely sure how to call that. Do uh, check that out on Steam, there will be a link and everything. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead. So, small disclaimer here, I played this once and I failed horribly, horribly bad badly. So, uh, let's check out what we can do. The first nation that you have to pick is uh, the United Kingdom. No other nation was available there. I'm not going to read through all of this text, you can pause here. Um, just gives you a little bit of historical background. But you can sort of see which area we are choosing already, so this is very much First World War stuff. We're gonna start the game over here and then I'm gonna do a couple of things that I think are great. So again, this is a demo. Um, you can support it on Kickstarter. I encourage you to do that. I certainly did because it's a tank tycoon game. I'm not sure how often I'm gonna say that, but it is. Right, uh, we need to enter play name here. That's a serious strategy game, of course. And uh, our name is gonna be Series Works. And I don't particularly okay. You know what? I guess this one is Potentially this one is the most, uh, the one resembling me the most. Uh, and for, you know what, let's uh, pick the knightly one here with the unicorns. I think that's fine. Uh, we are not going to take the tutorial here, so we're going to skip that. And we're going to go right into the game. Now, as in all proper tycoon games, um, there are a couple of things here in the UI that are pretty straightforward. We've got this bar over here which tells us uh, our various resources, money, the amount of tanks that we have, the amount of materials and their exact um, what they exactly they are, iron, carbon steel, rubber, high carbon steel and glass, and then a couple of things that we don't have. And here are workers, 40, 15 engineers and no administrators yet. The most stuff will be happening down here though, and that is we've got these six buildings over here and this trial which seems to be locked in the demo. And we've got research where we basically find new stuff completely, engineering where we put that, um, take that stuff that we discover over here and turn it into a bit of parts and then that will be turned in turn into tanks. It's all going to be uh, come aware, uh, pretty much obvious once we do that. Right, we've also got the warehouse where we're stocking tanks and raw materials, admin and production. Now, the first things I want to do here is take a little bit of what I learned from my last play uh, through where I pretty much failed horribly, horribly, horribly badly. And I basically just ran out of money. I think the reason for that is that I wasn't focused enough, so let's try to design one particular tank and be successful with that. And I want to design what's called a female tank, so a tank that's primarily armed with machine guns. Our first visit, therefore, is going to be into the admin sector over here, and we're going to look at the staff that we've got. As you can see, we've got 40 workers. We are paying them £6,000 money, gold, uh, per month. And we've got 15 engineers. They're a little bit more expensive. 2000 each, I guess. 200 each. Um, and there's 150 each. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fire all of our workers. They're too expensive. Um, I don't want to carry these costs while we're just researching tanks. We're going to hire w w workers later on, but for now we're going to keep them um, off. On the other hand, we are going to hire a couple of engineers. And I'm going to go to up to 40 because you can put 40 engineers on a single task and we do want to fulfill that maximum for sure. We're also going to pick uh, one administrator, which you can do over here. These are specific people which are named. Uh, there are currently three uh, available in the demo over here. We've got this gentleman who is uh, somewhat better at hulls, turrets, weapons, and uh, some other things. I think he is a perfect match. Uh, the other guys here are not that particularly useful for research. This guy's engine and chesses, chesses, but there's only two categories and we pretty much need all four of them, or at least three of them. So yeah, we're going to pick Houston's over here, and uh, we are going to put him into this research center slot. That's the only thing that we need to take care of for now. So let's visit research then. Lots of things unlocked, uh, sorry, lots of things locked over here in the demo as you can see, but the research line is available, as is the building overview. I will need to think about whether I need to take a look at the building overview. So you can see a lot of different things here are applicable to this area here. You can see Houston's is still around. 
Um, and he does provide us with a bonus on the research of a couple of the categories. Everything else seems to be fine. There's a bit of maintenance. I'm debating whether we should upgrade that. I'm also debating whether we should unlock other upgrades here. But I want to be a little bit more prudent with our money here. So let's not do that for now. Let's uh, focus on the actual research, which we're going to do on research line over here. Now, how does this work? We've got three overall categories, structure, mobility and firepower. Each of them have two subcategories, primary weapons, secondary weapons, power unit and running gear and hull and turret respectively. Now, as I said, we want to do, and each of these subcategories has their little uh, research tree down here. We can always see the number of man hours required, number of staff that we can apply to each task, and whether they are locked or unlocked. We can also see, if we go to hull over here, that's going to be our first start, we currently have researched the riveted rhombodial hull, which does give us access to, for example, the Mark I over here. And that's just the sort of basic hull. As you can see, there's nothing around it. That's just a basic hull. It does have certain properties, transportability, stealth, all of these things. Um, most importantly, armor here, I guess. Uh, it does have resource requirements, and it is compatible with running gear type 1, power unit type 1, and secondary weapons type 1. It also has a couple of slots here that we can be using for other things. And that is when they're not modified, uh, not called a component here, but a modification here. That is something that you apply to each slot uh, here. They need to, of course, match up to that, and that's going to be all right. Now, I think the Mark I is lovely. Um, is there anything else then here that we need? Now, I don't actually think there is that much that we need. I would kind of like this Skeen's Ball Mount. That's a slightly better um, weapons port, so that is a good way to hide our guns behind. I'm not entirely sure we actually need that, though. How much, how much of this stuff do we really need? We want to start out with a basic tank over here. I kind of want to do this at least. Tropex Glass. Where's that? That's a site modifier for the internal or front slot. Do we need that over here? We've got the site internal. We could be using that. We could be using that indeed. That's on the roof rails. So getting to over here would take us quite a couple of man hours actually. But you know what? We're going to do that. We need to start somewhere. We're going to apply 40 guys to it. They're going to take three days uh, to discover the chase aisle. We're going to do that and go ahead with that. Now, there's one more thing that I want to do, and that is in the warehouse over here, where we st uh, stuff all of our materials. And um, you can see we've got quite a couple of materials already right now. So, unfortunately, the sabotage risk over here is kind of high. So, I at least want to get the security update for upgrade for that. So, let's do that. It's going to take 14 days and 10,000 pound, gold, whatever, uh, to do that. So that is all that we actually need for now. We're not going to produce anything. We're not going to do any engineering because we don't have the fundamental research there. Chase our hull is done though, so that was pretty quick. Let's go for the reinforced hull and complete that too. It should also only take three days. And after that, we're going to be in a nice position there. Three days are gone. And then we're going to go for ex the extended hull. It's going to take a lot longer, five days here. Um, and I need to dial down a little bit on the timing over here and let's hit OK. There we go. Ooh, here's a world event. Materials prices are decreasing. Well, that's a nice thing because we will need materials to ultimately build tanks and that is how we're going to make money. So uh, let's buy some stuff. Our material storage, we currently have 10,000 iron, carbon steel, rubber. Now, I think one of the things that will probably be a little bit short is high carbon steel. So Let's try to buy high carbon steel. You can see all of these things are up here on the top. We can buy them from three countries, Sweden, the United States, or the Ottoman Empire. Um, the most important differences here are the speed at which they're going to be delivered, 24 days or, or 12 days, the price, and the availability, and of course the safety. Now, safety means that there's a chance that over here there's a higher chance that not the entire order will be completed. But here's the thing. This costs 140 per ton. This costs 50% more. This number is not 50% higher than this one. I think it is better to pick the Ottoman Empire and accept that not all of the stuff is going to be delivered rather than go for Sweden and be sure that more is going to be delivered but pay a higher price anyway. 
So that being said, I think we would want to push that up to at least around the same number as the other ones. So let's buy 4,300 units from the Ottoman Empire. That is going to take quite a while to come over here actually, 24 days. So we might instead also buy some of this stuff from over here. And I'm going to actually buy 3,300 here. So pretty much buy all of the stuff that we can. That is going to bring us to a nice 11,000. I think we can also probably do some medium carbon steel. I think overall the same logic applies. Let's do buy it from China. I think that's going to be all right. Can we actually buy that much? Yeah, we can. It's They do have more available, but we can only store up to 45,000 tons. So I suppose this is going to be fine. Yeah, let's go ahead and buy it. There we go. That's fine. And then we're going to hit play over here. Wait for this stuff to be done. We've got a competitor here. Well, that's not great, um, but of course that is to be expected. They've got quite a couple of uh, employees. That's that's quite a significant number there. They also have already one technology and a lot of factory upgrades. Hmm, interesting. Right, um, by the way, we should actually take a short look here at the world map, see Great Britain and see what contracts and so on they have available. Nothing for now. We also know basically nothing about your tank doctrine. That's fine. You haven't really established one. So we are a little bit pioneering here in our um, in our little company. And by the way, you can see over here, this is going to take two days. This is going to take five days for the upgrade. And then there's uh, various shipments here that are going to be delivered over the next sort of 24 days or so. Right. Extended hull is done. And that does mean that we've got all of these things here discovered. I think that's a good starting point to actually look at uh, whether we can design a ship over here, uh, something over here. So we've got the fundamental research done. Let's take a look at engineering and let's make a part out of that that prob uh, that pr uh, comes together. Again, very similar setup over here. Lots of things that are currently unlocked uh, still. So let's go to engineering itself. Right. You can see we've got three basic hulls, the Mark 1, the Mark 5, or the medium whippet. We're going to start with a Mark 1 over here because we want to stay a little bit on the cheaper side and actually make some money over here. And you can see this is just basically the hull itself. Now, this so far is not very fancy. There isn't, there's nothing particularly wrong with that, but we can certainly do better. So let's take a look here at the selected modifications. The first one we're going to do is we're going to do an escape hatch. We're going to click on that and you can see it appearing up over here. There's a little, little escape hatch. Of course, we're not just doing that uh, for the great, uh, for the greatness of things, but because there are consequences to that. Crew awareness goes up by one. Crew safety goes up by two. Crew comfort goes up by one. And actually, a negative thing: hull top width. So basically, the armor on the top of the uh, thing is going to go down by one. It's also going to cost us 35 kilos. Uh, five materials that this tank will need at the end of the day, 20 man hours, so it's going to take longer to produce, and it's going to be slightly more costly. But in the great scheme of things, that's not a big modifier uh, to this thing. As you can see, it already is costing us uh, over 3,600 uh, per, per chassis over here. Right, um, let's take a look at the other things. We could go with a tail wheel. And this is an interesting question because it increases mobility by quite a bit. The downside is the mass over here, 250 tons, that is quite significant. So I think we're not going to do that for now. We're going to keep uh, not doing that. Radiator fans would be lovely indeed. But let's actually check where they are in terms of research. Radiator, are you anywhere over here? Radiator fans, they are over here, but that would be too long, I think. We need to get going. We need to actually design our first tank over here. Uh, because the contracts are going to start to pour in. So, yeah, let's uh, not do that. Okay, back to escape hatch. This we can't. We could go for an autovac system. Transportability, range, that's nice. Repairability. Crew safety goes down slightly. 55 kilos. It's not insignificant. And the 40 hours do make a difference. But let's do it anyway. Here's the one that I actually wanted. And that is the port, I guess, over here somewhere. Oh, yeah, there, I think. Right, so the gun port, what are we going to use? We could use this little symbol here or this one. I like this one a little bit more. It does give us soft accuracy. So accuracy of our machine guns, crew awareness, crew aiming, slightly lower crew safety, but that's also true down here. All in all, I think it's just the slightly better choice. This one does give us all in all in the categories that we are interested in, like a plus four, this one a plus five. 
Debatable, but I like it. It just looks a little bit better to me. Right, we're not going to do anything here in Balkats. We could um, build a chicken wire on top of it, but I don't like that because I A, just really dislike how it looks. And there's that. We could go for the Triplex Glass. I would like that. I would like that a lot, actually. That's a plus three on, on all of the crew attributes here. Could also think about a periscope. Crew storage. That is nice. The triplex glass and a periscope would be lovely additions. Let's actually check on that. So, yeah, that's over here. You know what? We're going to research that still. It's going to take five days. It's all going to delay things slightly longer here. But I think it's going to be all right in the end. It's not going to take too, too long here. Right, World War approaches. That is, of course, an interesting factor, but we're not able to fulfill anything yet. Upgrade here on the warehouse is done. Nice. Reputation increases due to outside effects. That's not really that important. But yeah, now we have discovered everything that we need over here, and we can finally go into engineering and finally design that part. This is the longest one uh, that we're going to take, because just I want to start and get going here a little bit, so... We're going to pick all of the things that we did before, not the chicken wire, too expensive. Um, the triple X glass here and the periscopes is lovely. And then over here in crew storage, uh, in, in the last internal slot here, we could go for ammo storage, fuel storage. I like crew storage. It's not as as massive. Yeah, the man hours do do is a bit of a downside, but I think it's going to be all right. So, yeah, we're going to put a little bit of a storage box in there. And that is going to be the Mark 1 hull. Notice, this is not a tank yet. This is only a single part here, uh, which we have modified to a sufficient degree. Now, how many people are we going to apply to that? Um, I would like that to take about... To take about 10 days, maybe? 9 days? 9 days is maybe a bit too many. You know what? I think 12 days are fine. So we're going to apply 8 engineers to that. Um, and that should give us 32 that we can put back to fundamental research and other things. Uh, but I do want to have the full complement there, so let's actually hire eight more. There we go, and that's fine. And then we go back to research and continue to research the next things. Now, I'm fairly happy with the hull that we have designed. Let's go to turrets. Uh, we want to design a female tank, so what we need is a quote-unquote turret, which in this case is going to go on the side of the tank, and we need the female version Mark 1. We're going to apply for, uh, 40 people to that. That should only take three days or so. Fine, there we go. And we've got the riveted, riveted sloped sponson. Sponson? Spoonson? Hmm, I don't know. Right, that's fine. Do we need anything else over here? Um, a periscope? A communication device? This stuff, this stuff is also interesting. It does give us uh, the ability to apply modifiers, which might not be the worst idea. Okay, yeah, let's go for that and um, research some things on which we can apply modifiers. Here we go. Should only take three days. Right, there we go. And as you can see, we ordered 3,300 high carbon steel. We only got 3,100. Not a big loss, to be quite to be quite frank, honest, uh, to be quite very honest. Right, uh, can we order more though? No, I don't think we can. M maybe from this stuff over here? Oh, interesting. While this is on the way, we can't order more. Huh, well, in that case, let's go ahead and order a little bit more from Serena over here. Shouldn't be too expensive. And should be fairly fast. Right, there we go. Come on. Tempered steel plates, lovely. Do we need more here? I don't think we do. I mean, yes, all of these things would be lovely, but we do need to get going, right? Pistol ports, periscope. What what can you actually use? Sides, and that is sides side. Okay. MG mount sides, internal storage. Internal comms. Yeah, communication device is lovely, but this is taking 2,000 hours there, and... Well... I like the idea of pigeon ports, to be quite honest. Radio, it's a bit more massive, a bit more costly too. 75 ton, eh, this... I dislike the man hour requirement, 30 hours is not nothing. Hmm. 
Reinforced rivets is lovely, but the mass is is a big no no sort of. Could go for communication. Do what? Yes, I've got. You know what? We will go for for uh, for doves. Why not? It just sounds funny. Let's see whether that will break our neck here. So, here is the first important bit of news. Acknowledging the importance of tanks, the High Command has decided to separate all future tank regiments from the Machine Gun Corps and assign them to a dedicated corps with the official name of Tank Corps. From now on, you can expect development in doctrines and tactics, tank concepts and so on. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That does mean more contracts are going to start appearing soon and we need to get going a little bit. Um, so... You guys are all finishing your stuff. That's quite timely because then we can go under engineering and start to look at the turret. We're of course going to pick the female turret and you can see it's sort of very open on one side. Um, and then this is basically the gun platform. We are going to include, I guess, the sponsor door. It's basically plus two. This is not quite as important. So you know what? We're going to pick this. That's going to be fine. Escape hatch on the top. You don't need to do all of the things, but I find especially the, the sort of smaller ones are kind of useful. Ooh, and we can pick a tank intercom, for example, or radio. This would be a massive plus four, and this would be still a plus two. You know what? Let's do pick a radio in there. That is nice. And uh, we could pick a doors mount. That is quite a good thing, but it is very, very m massive. So uh, let's instead pick these things. I do kind of like them. Anything else here? Crew gear storage? Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's do it. Um, and that's fine. That's that's a good enough uh, position here. And we're going to again use eight people to do that. It's only going to take four days, so that's not too uh, difficult, and that's fine. Now, we have got a hull and a turret in play. Let's look at mobility. We currently have the Daimler Knight six-cylinder engine. I think there's a better one over here. And this is indeed a Type 1 engine, so this one would fit. Let's therefore try to get uh, to that point. This is only going to take two days. Should be fine. Exhaust management. And then we're going to go inline engine. Four more days. Fine and lovely. You guys are going to be done f sooner than that in two days. Here we go. F you've designed the turret. So at this point we've got eight idle engineers. I kind of dislike that, but it's going to be unavoidable. We can't really time it really, really well. More stuff is coming online. And here's the first big news item. A new tank concept has been adapted. Each exact tank characteristics are to be revealed prior to the trials. For the time being, our insiders could only learn that the weight limitation, 2,800 tons, uh, sorry, 1,000 tons, uh, that it's going to fo uh, focus on soft attack, which is exactly what we need, mobility and protection. So we now know that there is this concept and there is going to be a contract to fulfill that potentially. So. That is exactly the design limitation that we need to work around with, so that's good. Well, we've got the inline engine here. We should potentially go for this. Two more days. And I'm guessing the improved power transmission is also something that we're going to look at in a short moment here. Uh, I should have potentially increased the sights and stuff of the... of our uh, turrets. Completely forgot about that. Right, there we go. Improved t power transmission. Now we could go for a lot more things here, but this one might be nice. It's also not too expensive, I think. Reliability. Useful. How long does that take us? Four days. Let's actually check that out, because I'm expecting that uh, contract to come online very, very soon. So, yeah, let's look at power unit. And you can see the, the two engines that we have got available here. here. Both of them are Type 1. This is uh, a lot more expensive, especially in, in duration to build. But this one provides 29 mobility. This one provides 71. I really, really like this engine. And that is why we went for it a little bit. Um, let's do use a handbrake. It does give us a bit more ag agility, agility and soft accuracy. 
can't do any of these things, the cooling pump would be, I think, kind of lovely. Cooling pump would be lovely. We can use the radiator. It does give us a huge benefit here, even though it is kind of expensive in weight. Muffler, electric transmission. I think I like the idea of going with the slightly uh, less bulky one. The wood carburetor seems to be going exactly well for agility. Uh, sorry, for mobility. Trins box, yes, please. Final drive, why not? And then an exhaust. So, cooling pump. You know what? Let's not do it. Let's uh, simply go ahead here and design this. It's going to take nine days. That's fine. Uh, we do need to design, design a couple of things in research still. And uh, ideally, we want some technologies for that. For example, a running gear. Uh, we've got the centipede running gear. I don't think we need necessarily the better one. Uh, but I probably at least want to have some some benefits here. For example, this one. Um, let's not forget about uh, applying this this time, though. So, one of these technology bonuses. And we've got another competitor. You actually have designed your first tank here, which already looks kind of uh, like a female tank to me. Uh, which is not great. Not great at all. Uh, we do need to be competitive here. And right now it seems like they have a little bit... Uh, more stuff than we do. Nevertheless, uh, let's keep on doing things. Just want to get the first couple of things here out of the way. And here we go. This is the new heavy infantry support contract that is available. In 21 days, we need to be able to submit a tank uh, to these requirements. And that is the heavy infantry support. That is exactly what we want to design. So let's see whether we can make that in this time. Now, we've got the low track running gear. We have pretty much everything that we need over here, right? How long does that take? Four days. How long have we got on this one? Three days. I think that's that's a worthwhile trade-off. Let's go for this and see whether we can... Whether we should be... I think we should be doing that. So, yeah. Let's go ahead. Four days. And four days, we are going to have that available. Right. One, two, three, uh, four. There's the engine that's fine one more day and we've got the durable rollers right let's get going let's design the last parts over here the running gear and um, again it's going to be the type 1 centipede running gear so we're running around that um, with enhanced rollers 75 kilos it's not too bad all of these things are way too too weighty bulky so we're not going to do that and up over here we're just going to pick a couple of one a couple uh, ones over here so that's fine two days if I use all of you you know what let's actually use exactly as many as I need so for this to be done in two days that's fine and then we're gonna apply the rest over here on the last things that we need and that is the guns we don't need a primary gun because we have a female tank over here but we do need some improvements here I think on uh, this stuff so that's a plan Ooh, five days can I hire more engineers on a short-term basis over here? Like 16 more? Research. Um, research, go over here. Let's go with this. Three days, that's fine. That's, that's good. That matches up relatively nicely. Heavy assault tank concept. So that is another tank concept. And last time I tried to do all of these. That didn't work out too well. Um, so this is basically a male tank with guns sticking out of there. We're going to ignore that for the moment. And, and we're going to focus on getting the tank done that we need. Now, how long exactly do we have on the clock uh, on this one yet? 13 more days. That is kind of a, a tough time over here. Uh, let's wait for this design to be done there with a light machine gun. Now we've got 12 days. 12 days is not a long time. We do need to design the entire tank too. And ideally we should, should subject it to certain t uh, tests. Is there anything here that we, that we need in terms of secondaries that we really, really want? And I completely forgot about using the upgrades on the tank again. All of these are really, really good improvements. But all of them would take too long, I think. Even at 40 people that we're going to commit to that. So yeah, I think we are going to keep it as is and try to get our design in there. So 
Let's do the last thing here and upgrade our guns. Which one of them is better? Seems to be the Lewis is slightly better in terms of soft attack here. Although it's slightly worse in crew performance. But you know what? I think I'm still going to go ahead with that. Um, let's pick this. Why not? Let's pick that. Why not? All of these improvements here are not that useful. Soft rate of fire, yeah. Reliability, yeah. I kind of like it. Crew aiming is slightly worse, but everything else seems to be fine. Okay, you know what? That's that's okay. Uh, let's use as many people here as we can to... You know what? Let's sort of use everyone. It's only going to be a single day here, and we afterwards need to design the tank, which is, of course, what exactly what we need. So let's go design, and let's put all of these things together. So here we go. That's our Mark 1. You can see the periscope. That is our modified thing. Running gear. We've got two versions here now. Uh, one of them is the basic one with no upgrades and there's no one with the upgrades. 200 uh, kilos more expensive and slightly uh, sturdier to build. But you can already see it's starting to look a little bit like a tank at least. And that is lovely, isn't it? Right. Secondary weapons here. Uh, we are going to use the modified loose. And that's sticking out of there. And then turrets we could pick the male ones, that would look like that. We're going to use the female ones, and we're going to put guns in these gun ports too. Right, that does give us a relatively decent tank, I think. It does come in slightly below the requirements. Um, wait a minute, let's actually check that. I think that was 26,000 tons, and we would be slightly, slightly below that, and sometimes I think... No, 28,000 tons. Okay, 28,000 tons is fine. I think we can fulfill that. So yeah, let's go back to design. It's a pity that it doesn't save that, um, but we can go slightly faster over here. So let's uh, pick all of these things together, making sure that I'm going to pick the right one each time. By the way, notice the cost difference here. That is massive. That is, that is a very, very significant increase in timing. But I think it's going to be worthwhile because our, our mobility is going to be so, so much better. We're going to commit 40 people to that. It's going to take seven uh, days. And we're going to call this the Prometheus. So the first basic tank that we have over here. Oh, uh, we do need some crew. Right. <laughs> Forgot about that. So let's select the crew. Uh, we do need a commander. So let's pick one over here. We do need a driver. We need four driver points. He's going to give us four driver points. That's fine. Uh, we do need gunners, because otherwise that's going to be slightly awkward. So let's pick three of uh, these guys here to be gunners to operate all of these machine guns. We don't need any loaders because we have no guns, no larger ones. Uh, we do need at least one mechanic or a batter two. So we can go for mechanic slash gunner so that we have slight access over here, which I think is going to be alright. I don't actually think a loader does anything. Let's keep it at this. Uh, we can select some crew gear here. Uh, I think the ones that are useful are soft damage, are soft rounds, and are gonna be carabine. So basically, just take your normal infantry equipment, stick it out of the tank, shoot people. Uh, we could of course pick different things too, but I think these ones are the best uh, in, in this tank design. Because again, this is an anti-infantry tank, and it's a relatively decent one at that. We don't need to select any ammunition, because again, we don't have any big guns, so that's fine. Seven days until this baby should be uh, ready to go. And in the meantime, we could go ahead here and research more things, which would not be a terrible idea. Especially here on the uh, gun stuff. So yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's have you guys go for that. Two eight days. That should match up relatively well. And dandy. So let's hit play over here. And we're going to wait for this tank to uh, be ready. Company A is also being established. That's an important milestone. Because that means very soon we are going to be able to produce stuff. And that should be kind of interesting. Here we go. Prometheus is done. We're going to subject that to trials. It's going to take four days and going to cost us a little bit of money, but that should tell us a little bit about the performance of the tank. Now, four days is... I don't really want to push it, so we're just going to offer this tank um, to the board over here. There are some competitive offers. Uh, they are fulfilling the design requirements here by between 35 and 55. 
I think we've got better chances than that, but we don't really know ourselves because you can see a lot of the re these requirements here, we don't know how well we match them. We know we are below the weight mi limit here, that's good. Mobility, we don't know ours yet. It is what it is, let's offer it up, uh, let's th have them find out. Uh, within four days we couldn't redesign it anyway, so that's gonna be okay. The other thing that we do need to do is we need to finally hire back some workers. So let's hire 50 workers here and let's hire an administrator for the production hall too. And I think this is going to be this gentleman over here because he's an assembly expert. He's also going to save us some costs. So we are going to employ you. Yeah, that's fine. And then we can go to the production hall indeed and start building up our new tanks. This is our tank. We can build up to 18 based on the raw materials that we have. Uh, building 18 with the staff that we currently have would take 95, 97 days. That's a little bit too long. Let's uh, cut that down to something more manageable like 11 days for the first two. And I think then we are going to hire more people and use it like that. I mean there is some benefit to, to setting up the thing and, and have it run with that. But I think that's fine. Oh, by the way, we should actually check on... How much material we need for each of these tanks so that's a thousand iron 1400 medium steel no wait a minute that's for two tanks isn't it yeah yeah okay so nevertheless uh, we do need a little bit more medium steel than everything else a little bit less rubber but a lot of high carbon steel too so i think we've got a relatively good setup here um so yeah you know what uh we did want to do you know two let's let's just start over here with two tanks of course at this point we w wish that we had more workers we can't hire that many more right at this moment that's fine um gun crew researched yes let's continue to go for the heavy secondaries uh, but i think we can actually fire a couple of uh, engineers here yeah let's oh No, 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 sorry, what's... Oh, it didn't add you! That's too bad. Does it reduce the timing now? I don't know. I think, ah, oh, that's that's too bad. Right, competition is fierce. So, our competition has brought up another um, tank over here. And you can see this one is a male version. There are proper guns sticking out to the side of this one. Uh, whereas we only have gut machine guns. And here's the good thing. So... Our tank design has been accepted, and that is very, very lovely, because now we do know a couple of things, and that is the War Office will place three contracts, totaling 42 tanks. So basically, we can produce up to 42 tanks, and they would be bought from us. Of course, at this point, acceptable performance and so on. Yeah, nice, good, good, good work. Right, so at this point we do know that we can produce a lot of these things and it would be fine. Currently we're only producing two. So let's go ahead and hire more staff all the time. And we're going to try to put them to good use as time goes on. And that should be fine. That being said, I think now is a good place to put in a cut. So let's find out next time whether we can actually commercialize these tanks and uh, put them and, and basically... Yeah, get ready. Our money so far is looking okay-ish. Uh, we are spending quite a bit um, and it's still only June, but I'm hoping at least uh, that we will be able to sell some tanks. It is a little bit more tricky than that, but we're going to see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. It's good to have you back and uh, do like and subscribe and all of that. Bye-bye, guys.